I just said it's warm. <laughs> Back in the garage finally, been super busy editing and uh, setting up videos with Leatherman and a few other companies and whatnot. You guys can all check that out on the Instagram. Anyways, we're getting right into this build again. Musty's getting a whole new transaxle. That means a four speed, still one inch axle shaft, still a peerless. It's 2300 series and it is a cast iron diff. It's right here. So I got it all ready to go. I just got to take off a rim, put the rim onto the axle, set it up, start taking it apart, get it all welded. So I'll see you guys when that happens. Let's go. Last thing to do is put the top half of the case on, bolt everything on, fill it up with oil, and bam, locked. Okay, well that's about it for this. Awesome, so sweet, love it. Love locking transaxles, it's something uh, they should have came factory with. And I know some did, but I wish they all came like that. And with one inch axle shafts, boom. All right, now that the diff's all locked, it's time to take out the old three speed 1200 series peerless. It's also got a few issues of its own, a couple leaks, but uh, it's still a great axle. And I'm actually planning on swapping it into this Ford. If anyone was wondering what's going on with the Ford, I haven't worked on it in a while because it's a lot of work. And I was originally running this big 6338 peerless transaxle, but it's just too big. So I wanted to use Musty's rear axle, but to get that one, I need to get that John Deere 212 going. Now that it's locked, time to do this. So let's get this all taken apart and uh, get the other one uh, mocked up. You have up. a 1200 series transaxle and you're wondering why am I taking mine out? I'm only taking out because I got the benefit of the four speed. You, yourself, don't worry. This thing has proven more than enough, especially in Musty the rig. Over the last year and a half, we've hit a lot harder obstacles and like I've beat the living crap out of this rig. So I'm super happy to be moving on. I've ran my time with this axle and this axle is going to live on for sure. So let's get on to the main event, which is figuring out how to get that other one in there. Woo! All right, now before we go any further, we need to talk about my belt setup. So as you guys can see, I got this really weird thingy here. Got a pulley on one end and a drive shaft. I'm not running a drive shaft. This is off an old Boolins mower, the one you guys have seen on the profile and it's for the gate, the deck engagement. So it takes a pulley input, it has a one-to-one -one gear ratio and puts a, a 90 degree output. This is to the drive shaft and does whatever. Anyways, I think I can use this box to fix my issue. What's my issue, you ask? Musty has a uh, vertical shaft engine. So it points down and the pulley sits flat underneath the frame. But the input on the transaxle is horizontal. So it sits on the side of the transaxle. So my issue is I have, my belt has to do a flip in the mower frame and it used uh, idler pulleys and weird angles. And it worked, you guys seen that it worked, but I always had issues when I got wet, muddy, or the belt, the belt wasn't new. So I think I can change that by installing this guy flush with the frame so that my one belt goes from my engine to that little 90 degree and my clutch system's in there and then off of this side put another pulley that will drive the transaxle. Kind of sounds very complicated. It is going to be complicated but I think it's going to fix all my issues that I have with Musty and just make this rig better than it is. All right. So we had some uh, fun getting this pulley off of this spindle. It was seized. I tried a couple pullers and broke the pulley. I ended up having to do a relief cut down the keyway, as you can see. And uh, I did do it pretty damn good. You can just see it just barely nicked the end. So not bad at all. Anyways, I also had to cut this off because this is going to sit on my frame underneath. 
and the belt's gonna be coming in here. So it had this big tab on it because uh, the belt usually came in here because this would sit like that. So I was gonna try and reuse this, but now I'm not. I'm gonna go to my hardware store and get a couple pulleys. Now this is a reduction gear ratio. Um, for every one turn of this, it is only, the output only spins three quarters of the way around. I am gonna pop this open because it has a couple, uh, it has a fill on it for the oil inside of the uh, case here and a bleeder slash vent on the other side, which I actually have to cap off and move to the top so that the breather's actually, cause this is actually mounted the other way cause this is a deck engagement and a PTO. Um, so it would actually be mounted 180 degrees how I have in the vise, but I'm gonna mount it the other way. Hopefully that still all works good. I'll get into it here. I'm gonna probably pop this open, see what it looks like inside. Again, this is a lot of work, as I said, but we're trying to do some new different stuff in the mower gang here, and I think this is a great way of going about it. Maybe this might show you guys how to uh, make use of some of your old farm equipment parts. So, Musty, get ready for some new upgrades. No more belt issues, mark my words. Let's do this. All right, so I got curious. I wanted to figure out what kind of gear setup I have in here. Looks like I got bevel gears. Kind of like your ring and pinion setup. So one input shaft this way, output shaft down, or vice versa, however you want to think about it. Awesome though, I picked up a few pulleys. Looks like I'm gonna be running for the input of this thing is gonna be a three and a half, and for the output I'll do a four and a half, and then on the transaxle will be a four and a half inch pulley as well, and then the uh, engine is a seven. There is gear reduction in here, about one turn for input is three quarter turn output. And then there's uh, obviously gear reduction in there. And then there's pulley reduction, gear reduction between the pulleys and stuff. So I got some math to calculate and stuff, but I did a little bit of pre-calculation. I think I got a close enough setup to where I can start building things and mocking stuff for a belt. But uh, it is very complicated, I'd say, to uh, figure out ratios and stuff. All right, check it out. Okay, so. Basically, this is not done, but it's uh, good to go for pulley-wise. So it's time to actually build the bracket that mounts this to the frame, and then I also got to build another piece here for any torque, a side torque. So I'll have a V bracket going up, and I'll show you that, guys, in a minute. Anyways, loving how this is coming together. Love how this is going to be full of oil or gear fluid and uh, super ear-changeable, placeable parts. So... Rock on, musty, get her done. All right, I've been in the shop working. I figured I'd go over a few things with you guys because I've been on the lathe, lathing up some parts and uh, cutting out and drilling some pieces. So now that I got the pulleys that go on to my corresponding shafts, I can actually start mounting this to my frame. So I have three holes here that I can mount to the frame and that goes underneath the frames up here. Only thing I'm worried about is this is fine for taking torque this way, but any any um, force on this shaft is gonna try and pull it back and I don't want that torquing motion. So, hopped on the lathe, lathed out this piece to go over top here, nice snug fit. And then I'm going to get a piece of metal rounded around that at an angle and then bolt that up onto the frame. For this side, I'm planning on running one of these guys on here, like so. And I laid down three of these guys to go in here. One of those guys laid down to go into the middle and the top plate to go on top. All right, so that's what it looks like from the underside. So that's gonna be plenty strong. This whole flat top will be up against the frame. I'll have three 3 8 bolts. And then I'm also got this guy, it's not done, but it's gonna go over top there and then up to the frame as well. So that should be plenty, plenty, plenty strong. Sorry, that should be plenty strong on the frame. I'm not too worried about it. This is gonna be killer. Super stoked to be working on my lathe. It's, uh, it's awesome to be, uh, making my own parts. Like you guys probably seen my other videos, I get pretty stoked on this kind of stuff because uh, it's awesome just to make uh, 
machine part. I love that. Laid down the front of this one, laid down the inside of these guys, turn those ones down. Freaking love it. It's such a fun little lobby to do. All right, so next thing to do, weld all this up together, get this on there, get everything figured out, get that under the mower. All right, well, I've just been giving her shit in here. I've been building some brackets, working on the 90 degree box. So as you guys can see, I got my spacer all welded up. I just got some bolts in there holding all together while it's uh, cooling down from the weld. Then I got that piece on here and I made this guy. So this set sits at the right height as the top spacer there and that sits at the right height of the deck which puts my pulley 5.5 centimeters off the bottom of the deck which lines up perfectly with my engine pulley so this will get bolted on there that will get bolted on there everything can come off i can redo anything if anything gets bent i don't even know I, it won't get bent this shit's overbuilt but uh definitely going to be strong can't wait to get it in there i don't know if i'm going to continue on any more work for today because it's uh, Sunday and me and the lady friend want to get out and uh, take the dog for a walk and whatnot. So uh, we might go do that. Anyways, you guys will see uh, once I start working on this again. So uh, see you then. Check this out. The ruler sits on there all by itself, nice and flat. So there you guys can see how I'm going to be mounting this into my frame. So three bolts here two bolts there, this thing ain't going anywhere. Any torque will be pulled out of, off of uh, this shaft by this guy, just because it's gonna be securely mounted to the frame with two half inch bolts and then the three three eighths bolts on this side. Super strong setup, love it. I just gotta get this bottom side welded and then get that shit in the mower, or at least get start mocking up, see where I gotta drill some holes. Super stoked on this. So this is my frame inside the mower that's the height of it you can see my pulley sits down below and i do have a little bit of adjustment but where it sits right now is perfect all right guys check it out now it's only mounted in with two bolts right now but look at that so i got this piece of square tube right here just in line with where my input to my transaxle would be so i line that up with the input from the 90 degree gearbox I got spacer up there. I got two bolts in it right now, and I got to put the third one in. The uh, thing I had some issues with was um, marking these holes right here because it's such a long thing, and I don't have like a pen pencil. And well, I do have a pencil, but it didn't work. So what I actually ended up doing is taking the little felt piece out of my Sharpie or felt marker, put it on a piece of tie wire, and that just slides right up in the hole nice and easy. It's a super easy little quick tip for you guys there if you're wanting to mark a hole that's uh however long deep you could do like three feet deep with that setup anyways next thing to do drill another hole i got to go to the store to get some hardware bolts because i don't have long enough ones that i like these ones aren't strong enough and then uh yeah start looking at belt system i think i'm gonna get that third bolt in and then uh actually mount the transaxle in here so i can start seeing what this all looks like because i want to make sure it all fits because um this hole right here is where my shifter comes in. So I'm, I'm assuming from this guy to my transaxle is gonna be pretty close, which is fine. Least amount of room that no rocks can get jammed up in there. But yeah, anyways, that's what it's looking like. The man's been putting in some work. I'm gonna put some more in and then uh, we're gonna have some drinks and stuff like that. So yeah, let's go get it done. Hey, hey everybody, it's been a busy day, a few days actually. I've been still working hard. I'm gonna show you guys the progress. I, uh, next step actually I want to show you is my future of the build here. So, the issue I do have that's small is that my seat is on springs, which is okay, but it sits up too high on the mower frame. So, since it can go up and down, I had to build these lift brackets in here to actually do that. And the other thing is, I had this shifter plate that I cut out and put this rubber on to fit my shift pattern. But with the 1200 series, it's a three speed. And like I was saying, the 2300 is a four speed. So I'm actually gonna cut this all out and put a piece of aluminum in there and make my own shift pattern so that it shifts perfect. So the thing I'm gonna do now is actually take off the seat and that little frame up there, up there. And then uh, you guys will see a naked ass musty. So let's get to it, let's get her naked. All right, so check it, all naked and such. 
All right, so yeah, as you can see, factory shift hole. You can see my line there. I'm gonna cut that whole bottom plate off, keep this top plate, and then add in some aluminum there for lightweight. Because uh, I am noticing Musty is getting a heavy rig. She uh, has a lot of weight on her. But one thing I also noticed is this chair, the seat, weighs a shit ton. And that's all because of all this metal framing for the slider rails on the bottom. And I never, I just left that on there when I put it on there. Because I, and when I was first building this, weight was not, I was hoping more weight the better, honestly. And now I've hit a good weight point where I kind of want to start being cautious on what I add and what I take off. So I am going to take that hole off the bottom because the chair is metal and that should be fine. So thing I am doing is mounting my chair solid now. So no more big spring or tiny springs or any springs. I'm just going to be mounting it solid to uh, get my center of gravity lower. So what I'm going to have to do is add a filler neck out here, out to the side, so that I can fill up without having to move my seat, which will actually be nice because uh, the seat moving up and down kind of gets annoying, honestly. The spring doesn't do as much as it is us hoping it would do. It's fine. It adds it adds some shock in there, but I don't know. Tony ran this whole year with a solid mounted seat and not one issue, so I'm happy with that. Also, I did just talk about my brake system, and then after further talking to Tony, I'm going to be getting rid of this and putting it on to the Ford build that we're doing. Not this Ford, the uh, Ford LT, so the other one. And so I'm gonna put this in there so that my girlfriend has a hydraulic brake setup when she rides that. And then I'm gonna continue hydraulics, but I'm not gonna have a whole lever that moves back and forth. I'm just gonna have the brake because it works a lot better. So just the handle, I'll be able to push in and out like Magnum. All right, enough of me talking here. Let's get back to work. Let's cut this out. Let's get the transaxle in so I can start getting that 90 degree uh, sorted. I do got it basically bolted in. You can see the big angle dangle plate there. Everything's basically where I want it. I just want to make sure that it's straight enough with the transaxle so I can final bolt it and weld some stuff all nice and solid. Okay, let's do that. Woo. Check that out. All right, so right now, get you guys up in here and line up these two pulleys. So if we get up nice and close, you guys can see. I'm able to adjust this one back and forth on the shaft and that one a little bit back and forth on the shaft to get my uh, line up nice and right. I'm pretty close right now. I just don't have everything finalized, but I got the transaxle bolted in where she's gonna go. I got that thing bolted in where she wants to go. I just wanted to put the transaxle in so I know actually where the pulley's gonna sit so I can actually get that thing finalized and bolted in. But other than that, like, things looking pretty awesome. I can't believe I, I'm actually doing this. It's like a week's worth of work. Just decided to get her done because I had the parts. But uh, it's definitely gonna be a kick-ass system. So I'm gonna have a tiny little pulley up in here that can get adjusted up and down to tighten this rear belt. Because this one won't actually need to get loosened at all. It just stays tight because all my clutching is gonna be up on that top system. So no more 89 inch belt. I'm gonna be running a way smaller setup and I'll have two belts. But either way, super sick coming together. I'm loving it.